What is deep creativity? For me, it's the culmination of a 30-year journey of exploration. I have been interested in creativity from the standpoint of what happens in the creative process, especially in those moments that we call creative inspiration, those moments of great revelation, illumination, and epiphany that change the course of history and that give rise to the beautiful masterpieces and the brilliant groundbreaking scientific theories that change our lives. I've always been intrigued by those experiences. And one of the reasons is that on March 16th, 1987, I had one of those experiences myself. I was traveling through Australia because I wanted to go see the Great Barrier Reef. I had fallen in love with reefs during a time teaching in Hawaii, and I wanted to be as close to those reefs and to dive in them every day if I could. I was just a few miles away from the Great Barrier Reef, and I had fallen asleep and was awakened by a voice that said to me, you are greater than you ever imagined. I knew that that voice was speaking not just to me, but to you. It was saying, we have vastly underestimated ourselves as human beings. If you feel as I do, that that's true, that there is much more to who you are and what you're capable of being than you have experienced up to now, then my work, my writings, I'm writing for you because I have felt that my whole life. And at that moment, I knew I had to explore the creative process. So I studied psychology and got my PhD and did a postdoctoral fellowship then I sat down to try to write this book that became Deep Creativity, and I realized that my scientific training had not given me the proper understanding that I needed to be able to write this book. The reason is that scientists tend to view creativity as a process that leads from point A to point B, from where you are now to some product and that the emphasis is far more on the product than the journey, the process, or the experience. So when you look at scientific reviews of creativity, you will see that there's a glaring hole, a void, because to a large degree, scientists have not quite figured out what happens during that wondrous, astonishing journey that gives rise to creative ideas, images, and insights. Deep creativity is a reimagining of creativity, even redefining it. So the emphasis is not on the product, but on the process. The creative experience is fresh. It's unlike anything that has ever come before. It makes you feel that this moment is the only moment that matters, and it is the only moment that matters. There, there is nothing that came before, and there's nothing that will come later that matters. Only here and now, in this present experience. And the creative process is also transcendent. It takes you beyond yourself and connects you to something much, much greater. Some ideas come from other ideas in a simple logical thinking process, a process of inference. But so many of the great discoveries and masterpieces throughout history have not come that way at all. Einstein said, the intellect has little to do on the road to discovery because he knew that during his moments of great creativity and insight, his intellect wasn't really playing a role. 
So where do ideas come from? Where does creativity come from and how does it emerge? Those who have written the most careful descriptions of their own creative inspiration and also those who I've interviewed over the course of three decades plus will tell you that they lose themselves in the experience. They disappear into that experience, into that process. Isn't that interesting? Where do they go? What happens? Who do they become? For me, the answer is simple. When we are immersed in these powerful experiences of creative inspiration, we are connecting to nature in the deepest sense possible to the creation cycles that are happening everywhere in nature, in and around us. Birth, death, and rebirth. The change of the seasons. The diurnal cycles that fluctuate between day and night. The phases of the moon and the accompanying tides. We see cyclical processes everywhere in the formation of galaxies and continents, ecosystems, the cycles of the elements. There are natural cycles that are happening everywhere around us. Don't you think that those same cycles might be playing a role in how we create, where we generate things like new songs or a dance that we choose to express ourselves and our joy with. And speaking of joy, you have to factor in love and joy into the creative experience. I have yet to meet a great actor, writer, poet, sculptor, who doesn't talk to me about passion, about how much they love their art, how much they love the experience of creating. Why aren't we factoring those things into the scientific study of creativity? These things are overlooked, but not in deep creativity. Deep creativity has integrated into it a very expansive discussion of the role that love plays in the creative journey. Without love, you would not have any kind of great art or achievement in human history. You just wouldn't. Why do people devote thousands of hours to learning how to play the piano? Or I sat for years staring at a blank screen as I started to learn how to write books. It didn't come overnight, but I did it out of love and out of joy because there are moments, magical moments, when you're creating just about anything. Perhaps when you're cooking something at home or you're drumming if you're a percussionist or drummer. When something extraordinary happens, you find yourself in the flow of essence. Or perhaps that flow of essence finds its way into you. I think that... The wholeness of nature is embedded in every layer of the universe, including our minds and our bodies, our organs, our tissues, our cells. We may simply not be aware of it, but when we're immersed in the creative flow, when we are grooving with music that we love or, or singing and dancing and writing and reciting poetry and all these things that are forms of expression. We are tapped into that wholeness and all of the essence of the universe, everything that is essential to human experience that allows you to thrive, that moves through you like a fountain. We are the wellspring of creativity of the universe, embodying nature's wholeness and its creative power. That, my friends, is deep creativity. And a very important part of the creative experience, and this is what I believe ties me very closely to Vadim Demchog, 
and his work is play, playfulness. Now, I want to tell you about two different aspects of play. I understand, my understanding, and it is limited of the Russian language, is that there may not be separate words for these two aspects of play that I'm about to describe. One is a game, like chess. Chess has rules, strategy, goals. The objective is to win, right? The objective is to take the other player's king. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a chess player. Uh, and so when you play in this form, in this way, there's a great deal of structure. There's a great deal of thought, strategy, processing. But there's a different form of play where you're simply expressing and it's free flowing. What is the goal of the dance? Why do I dance right now? Why do I do it? Because it feels good. It brings me to the experience of here and now. It brings me into that experience and into myself in ways that other things might not do. And so I dance and dancing does not have a goal. There is not an objective. I don't have to do it a certain way. Those things aren't important. The only thing that's important when you dance is what you're feeling and experiencing now. And so you dance. That kind of play that is free flowing, that doesn't have structure, that is simply about being present now. We have a word for it in English, which is fun. Fun is what you feel when you're enjoying yourself, when you're rejoicing in play. Fun in English comes from the same root as fool. Because there is a thinking process that says only children and simple-minded fools play in this way sing songs and howl at the moon and scribble on paper and throw paint at walls. Those are fools who do that, but no, that's not accurate. It's the wisest who can do that, especially as adults. As children, we do it naturally. Many of us are socialized to stop doing it, by the time we're in our 20s, late 20s and 30s, we're supposed to think more practically about how to earn a living and raise a family. But play holds the key to our greatness. Vadim knows this and I know this. This is why I feel that Vadim Demchag and I are connected in a very deep way, maybe as brothers from two different mothers because we've both come through very different means in very different living in very different parts of the world that are much too isolated by the way from each other because my friends in Russia I I feel your hearts are connected to mine in these particular ways I feel that many of you understand that your hearts as well as your minds have to be integrated in what you do. That's a fundamental thing. Vadim and I know, both know, both have discovered through our life experiences that there is greatness that lies in your ability to immerse yourself in play and in creative expression. That greatness doesn't have to do with how much money you accumulate in your bank account, the size of your house or car, how famous you are, 
your reputation. That's not what greatness is all about. Greatness is about what you can experience, know, and feel right now. If you think about it, there's nothing else that matters but now. The future, we may not live to see it. The past is a story we tell ourselves. We have a hard time differentiating what actually happened in the past in terms of our memories from our own reconstruction of it. Every time we tell the stories of our past, they change a little bit. Researchers know this, but the present is the one thing you can count on. Play and creative expression can bring you into the present in ways that most people may not know. Because if you bring yourself into the present deeply enough, you connect yourself to the wholeness of nature, to that which abides in you and in everything else. That is a very, very profound place in which to live. I want to live as an embodiment of nature. Victor Shamus, he's getting older. One day he's not going to be around. The body's going to deteriorate, age and die. But nature, nature continues forever. Now, now is eternal. Here, here is infinite. If you don't believe me, let me ask you a question. When does now begin? When does now end? The construct of time is, is artificial. We break things apart. But now is a free-flowing experience that is never ending. Why would you want to live in a temporary situation where, you know, there's an old saying in English, life is suffering and then you die. If you think that that's all life is, is struggle and suffering and trying to make it in the world and being this tiny little creature lost in a vast, expansive universe, what kind of way to live is that? That's not where I want to live. That's not where the great artists like Leonardo or Michelangelo lived because when they created, when they immersed themselves in their creative experience, they became infinite and eternal. Either you know what I'm talking about or you don't. I have found that deep creativity is something that not everyone can access. It's not for everyone. It's, but it's for those of you who feel in your hearts that there's much more to life and to this experience of here and now than you have had a chance to taste up to now. There is more, my friends. Vadim knows this. I know this. The only reason we're doing these things, the only reason I'm speaking to you and appearing in Moscow in a bookstore is because I believe there's some of you who are yearning in your hearts for something more, something greater. I know this yearning. I spent a chunk of my life feeling it. There's a song written by the great sage, Indian sage Yogananda, and the words say, Will my days fly away without seeing thee? Without seeing thee, my Lord. My Lord, who's that? That's you. That's the wholeness that abides in you and in me and in all things. The creative experience doesn't have to simply be about building a better mousetrap, coming up with a, a more clever marketing strategy 
no, it doesn't have to be that way. The creative experience can be something that takes you to very, very profound places. That's why I say it's a heroic journey. It's a heroic adventure. And deep creativity, as well as the way of play and some of my other books are an invitation or a call to that adventure to step out of that limited, small, restrictive way of being that puts people in lives of quiet desperation and to go on a journey that can lead you to unimaginable bliss, ecstasy, and delight. These are your birthrights, my friend. And that is why the way of play and deep creativity and the entire series of books about play that are currently being published, that's why they're coming out, to serve you on your journey. Thank you for your time. Much love to all of you.